Hey guys, I'm Taylor York. I play in Paramore. We're at the Akron Civic Theater in beautiful Ohio. And I'm uh, going to show you guys some stuff. So for a long time I had a pedal board actually probably a little bit bigger than this and I had about 20 pedals in line. Like I didn't even have a looper, which was <laughs> kind of scary. If one pedal went down, my whole board was out, but I kind of held onto that for a while. Just like, it was like romantic to me or something. But this record, I finally bit the bullet and went to uh, a MIDI setup with the mastermind. So, which is great because I just don't have to tap dance as much and I, I was never very good at it but um, yeah this makes it a lot easier um, but I kind of have it set up with a bunch of instant access to try to make it feel like a pedal board just being able to hit pedals on and off um, yeah and have a few like momentary things just to kind of be able to quickly stab in effects um, which has been really cool Right now, I've got the Rainbow Machine on. Um, I got that pedal when we recorded our last record and I used it for one of its like wacky things, you know, and it kind of was, it sounded almost like a car. It was kind of self-oscillating and kind of this big swell thing. And so I didn't really, I didn't realize how usable it was until um, our drummer, Zach, has a band called Half Noise that I've played with a couple times. And I've kind of found this really cool like slap back, like modulated slap back. Um, it's like pretty subtle, you know, but it just kind of adds some width and dimensions. I use that like all over the place. And then I've got uh, two Rockworks uh, light overdrives. Um, so I've got one of those on as well. And I've got all my amps here um, playing uh, two Supro Statesmans, uh, one for my clean, one for my mid gain. And then I have a top hat and Plexador for my kind of uh, more gainy overdrive stuff. guitar tech and friend Riley put this together. He came over in Nashville and we kind of dreamed it up. But yeah, this top drawer is, you know, pitch and compression and drives. Um, so I've got the tone job, which is actually really rad. I'm just kind of using it for like, um, just kind of ducking my level down and thinning out certain parts. Um, and then, yeah, the dirt transmitter. The terminal is really cool. Um, got it because Kevin Parker has it. <laughs> because everyone loves Kevin. Um, but yeah, these are the, the two Rockworks, uh, the light ODs, which are just some of my favorite overdrives. Um, I got a, the Pog MIDI modded, which has actually been really cool. Um, this is, yeah, this is like my modulation drawer with the, the Dimension C's and the Waza Craft um, chorus and vibrato, which is awesome. The vibrato setting on this is so rad. And the Grand Orbiter, which is just, I don't know, like I feel like phasers are, phasers are always really tricky and that one is just kind of seems to fit like really well. Like I think all the controls, like you can really dial it in right, you know, front of house guys always like turn the resonance down and I feel like I'm always able to kind of rely on that one. And then this is the reverbs, uh, Rainbow Machine, which is not a reverb, but Rainbow Machine, the Empress, um, wait, this is the... This is the, what is it called, ecosystem. Um, yeah, the Mantic Proverb, the context, things insane. Um, yeah, and the reverb and the Mr. Black Superman. I wish that I was a drummer and I try to play drums, so I always kind of try to get away with having some sort of like auxiliary setup. And I got my three Supro cabs, um, which are awesome. I just, I switched them and drilled holes on the bottom so I could make them vertical instead of horizontal. Um, but those cabs are like so, they're, they're open back, but they're, it's, it's like a smaller cavity in the back. So it's kind of like a really cool, the dimensions of the cabs and then that, the cavity, like it makes it really interesting. I've never really heard an open back quite like it. Um, so those have been amazing, but I have, each one is assigned to a different amp. 
Um, so I can kind of change out speakers to kind of fit whatever I'm trying to do. Oh yeah, Bilt's like, they're like my, my favorite guitars in the world. Uh, Bill and, and Tim are just like, they're just geniuses. They're so awesome and like down to earth and everything that I throw at them, they just kill it. Um, so I, yeah, I play a lot of Bilt's. This was one of the, one of the first ones that I had made by them. Uh, I had like a Gibson Midtown that I used a lot on the last record, and, but there's a few things I kind of wanted to change about it. So they kind of made me a Midtown-inspired Volare, um, which I've made a few different versions of that. Um, but I just, like, I love Starcasters, like everyone, and um, but it was kind of cool to be able to make it fit me more, you know, and get the neck right. And um, These are uh, bare knuckles. They, they made me like a couple prototypes a while ago, and um, they just sound rad. Like P, I, I do uh, a lot of P90s in the neck with like humbuckers in the bridge. And I've got kind of a, kind of just more, I used to like, I had this, uh, these Fender Jazz Masters that I had them make me, just kind of turn them into Les Pauls. Um, and so I had built kind of make me the same thing, and they just, these guitars are so solid. Um, so yeah, it's another, I think it's like a Lawler Imperial I think it's a bare knuckle Mississippi Queen P90. Oh, this one's really cool. They just came out with uh, that guitar called the Corvair, um, which is so rad. <laughs> so we just made like kind of like a wacky pickguard for it. It's got like a reverse headstock, which still trips me up all the time. It's kind of funny when you're tuning and you have to like look at what key it is because you're not used to it. Um, this thing sounds awesome. I actually don't have a guitar that sounds like it. It's really interesting. And this is a new one that I actually got from Supro. Um, it's uh, the Coronado 2. Uh, this thing's awesome. Um, so I think they're single coil pickups. They look like humbuckers, but it just sounds amazing. It's got the wood saddle, which is really interesting. I was really nervous about taking that on the road, but it's held up really well. And this is one I just picked up from Chicago Music Exchange. It's an old Coronado 2, the Wildwood. And like someone painted like some roses on it, which I kind of loved. And I think at some point, I want to know whose guitar it was because like, you can see someone had a decal on it that says Rhinestone Cowboy, <laughs> which is insane. And I can't figure out where it's from, but yeah, this guitar is amazing. Yeah, I'm constantly buying pedals and looking on reverb and like I'm kind of obsessed with it. I, <laughs> I need to start selling things because I just keep acquiring them and they keep stacking up. But yeah, I just, I feel like, you know, pedals don't make something good just because, you know, they sound cool, but it's like they inspire me to do things differently. Um, yeah, so it's like, it's such a big part of, of what I do and how I create.